In this first episode of the Asthma Spotlight podcast, I'm going to share information with you that might help you prevent asthma attacks and it might even possibly save your life one day. I'm a family doctor with a special interest in asthma. I've spent many years caring for people with asthma and also teaching doctors, nurses and pharmacists about asthma and how to keep people safe. More recently, I've been involved in investigating asthma deaths to learn what went wrong. So I've decided, after all these years of teaching healthcare professionals, that it was time to do a podcast aimed at people with asthma and their families and carers. So why am I starting this episode with asthma attacks? Now, there are three main reasons. Firstly, Asthma attacks are a signal that something has gone seriously wrong, sometimes resulting in hospitalization or even death of a person with asthma. Secondly, because most asthma attacks can be prevented. And third, because today, as you listen to this podcast, many people in the world are currently being treated for asthma attacks, and these asthma attacks are themselves risk factors for future attacks. So I'm going to share some key messages that may help you to avoid future attacks and, as I said, may hopefully help you prevent hospital admissions and even death due to asthma. Asthma is a chronic ongoing disease which does flare up with attacks from time to time. During these flare-ups, the air passages in the lungs get very tight because of inflammation that causes both tightening of the muscles surrounding the air passages and also because of swelling of the walls of the air passages. So as a result, during these flare-ups or asthma attacks, it becomes very difficult to breathe in enough oxygen which our bodies need to function properly and essentially to keep us alive. While it is clear that the first priority you have when you have an asthma attack is to treat that attack. However, it's just as important to understand that if you've had an asthma attack, you are then at risk of having another one. So not only does the attack mean that something has gone seriously wrong, but it also means that that attack puts you in danger of having another one. And the next one might be more severe. So after treatment of your asthma attack, your next priority is to find out why you had it and to learn how to prevent the next one. This is something that you'll need help with from your own doctor or asthma trained nurse. So the information I'm sharing today will help you to take more control of your asthma. In other words, to help you formulate some questions which you need answers to when you do consult your doctor or asthma trained nurse. So ideally, after you've had an attack, preferably within a few days, book an appointment at your doctor for a post-attack review. Now this review, after you've had the attack, will help you to find out whether you're better, i.e. has the attack cleared up, or whether more treatment is needed. And secondly, it will help you to find out what went wrong. Why did the attack happen and what's needed in order to prevent another one? So in my view, there are five common modifiable risk factors that can lead to asthma attacks. Firstly, there is the so-called over-reliance or dependence on short-acting reliever inhalers. And this means that you're taking too much of your short-acting reliever. Now these reliever inhalers are usually blue, but they might come in different colors. The second modifiable risk factor is if you can't use your inhaler correctly. In other words, if you can't get the drug into your lungs, it's not going to work properly. Thirdly, not taking the medication which has been prescribed by your doctor is clearly something that you can prevent and deal with. And similarly, the fourth preventable factor is not collecting your refill prescriptions in time before your um, inhaler runs out. The fifth 
potentially preventable risk factor leading to asthma attacks is where you have not been provided with a preventer inhaler to help prevent asthma attacks. Now, this might be that in your country these preventer inhalers are not available, but I've been working in the United Kingdom where these drugs are freely available for young people and older patients, and in the investigations that I've been involved in into asthma deaths, it really saddens me that many people who've died from asthma have not been prescribed or are not taking preventer medications. So let me take you through these preventable factors one by one and explain why they lead to asthma attacks. So firstly, as I mentioned, taking too much of the blue reliever inhaler can actually lead to an asthma attack. Now I know this will surprise many people who believe that the blue inhaler is the only or main treatment that they need to take for their asthma. And this is such a, a sad misconception and hard to understand. The commonest short-acting reliever inhalers contain one of two drugs, either salbutamol, which is also called albuterol in some countries, or tibutaline. And these drugs are really for emergency medication. They're intended to be used for treating asthma symptoms that flare up, like coughing, wheezing, or shortness of breath, or difficulty breathing. And the other reason that they are prescribed is for treating attacks. So these reliever inhalers improve symptoms for a short time. In fact, they only work for about four hours. And that's why they are called short-acting reliever inhalers. So a key message is that these short-acting reliever inhalers only help for symptoms and they don't prevent attacks. So if you are only taking your reliever and not taking any preventer medication, there is a risk that you could have an asthma attack, mainly because you are not taking a preventer. Now another reason why these relievers should not be used regularly as the only asthma treatment is that they can actually worsen asthma by making the air passages very twitchy or irritable, which results in tightening or spasm of the muscles around the air passages in the lungs. So another key message is that regular use of short-acting reliever drugs may actually cause attacks. Now to be very clear, and so that you don't misunderstand me, These reliever inhalers are the right drugs to use if you have symptoms due to asthma. In other words, if you're coughing or getting short of breath or if you're having difficulty breathing or if you're wheezing, you should use these relievers and you should seek medical help from your doctor if you don't get relief. So if it doesn't make you better very quickly or if the relief doesn't last more than four hours. However, regarding your ongoing treatment, if you use your reliever inhaler regularly without a preventer inhaler, you may actually be putting yourself at risk of having an asthma attack. Now sadly, newspaper articles, TV shows and films and news programs about asthma often show pictures of people using a blue inhaler. And this gives the wrong and potentially dangerous message that these inhalers are the main treatment for asthma. The second modifiable risk factor for asthma attacks relates to poor inhaler technique. In other words, if you can't use your inhaler correctly, it's not going to get into the right place in your lungs and it's not going to help to control your asthma. So you should make sure that you're using your inhaler correctly Ask your community pharmacist, your doctor or your asthma trained nurse to check your inhaler technique. You might even want to watch videos which show you how to use inhalers. However, I would suggest if you do, first check with your nurse or your doctor or your pharmacist to make sure that these videos are accurate and correct and provide you with the right sort of information that you need to use your inhaler correctly. The third modifiable risk factor is if you're not taking the medication as prescribed by your doctor. 
And the next one, similarly, is up to you, really. If you're not collecting refill inhaler prescriptions when your last one is empty, then you clearly won't have enough medication to take to prevent your asthma attacks. So if you do have an asthma attack, it might be helpful if you think very carefully whether you could have prevented that attack by following your doctor's advice. As in the case of many, many chronic diseases, some aspects of your care can only be fixed by yourself. Now we come to the fifth potentially modifiable risk factor for asthma attacks. And this relates to preventer inhalers. These preventer inhalers are also called controllers. These drugs are called inhaled corticosteroids. And there's a lot of research evidence that supports prescribing of these drugs for people with asthma to prevent attacks and also to damp down symptoms from asthma. As I said, asthma involves inflammation, which is really irritation of the lung air passages. And it's logical that anti-inflammatory drugs, drugs that work against the inflammation to damp it down, like inhaled corticosteroids, should be prescribed both to control the inflammation and to prevent attacks. I will talk in more detail about drugs that are used for treating asthma in a future episode. However, I do want to point out, as I said earlier, that inhaled corticosteroids are not universally available worldwide. This is very sad, and particularly in low- and middle-income countries, there is limited availability or even no availability of these drugs which can be potentially life-saving. Similarly, these drugs may only be available in some places and some countries for those people who can afford them. There's currently a lot of work being done by international organizations to try and make these potentially life-saving drugs affordable and available all over the world. So asthma can flare up at any time, and sometimes very suddenly, without any warning, and therefore prevention of attacks by use of inhaled corticosteroids is a priority worldwide. You've probably gathered that three of the five modifiable risk factors I've mentioned can be fixed by yourself. That is, if you carry out your doctor's advice to take your preventive treatment when prescribed, and you collect refill prescriptions for these medications before yours runs out, you will no longer to need to use so much of your reliever inhaler. Medical help is clearly needed for the other two modifiable risk factors. So you should ask your doctor or pharmacist or asthma trained nurse to check that you're using your inhaler correctly. And if you haven't been prescribed a preventer inhaler, and it is available in the country where you live. A discussion with your own doctor about the availability of these drugs may be helpful. So in my view, the key messages for you to think about are as follows. Firstly, an asthma attack is a warning that something serious has gone wrong, and this requires urgent action on your part. Asthma is a chronic ongoing disease that needs to be controlled using preventer or controller medication to prevent attacks. Most asthma attacks and therefore most asthma deaths can be prevented. You should ensure that you're using your inhaler device correctly. So ask your doctor or nurse or pharmacist to check your inhaler technique to make sure that you're using it in the right way. The preventer inhaler medication is needed to treat the underlying asthma and to prevent symptoms and attacks. While on the other hand, the short-acting relievers are only really meant for treating symptoms and attacks. The short-acting relievers are not intended to be used regularly without a preventer. And in fact, regular use and over-relying on short-acting reliever inhalers which are usually colored blue, can be harmful and, if used without preventer medication, can actually cause asthma attacks. 
So finally, in my own view, and this is probably the most important message from this talk, after any asthma attack, no matter how mild or severe it was, a consultation with a doctor or a trained asthma nurse may be helpful in preventing future attacks by identifying and dealing with modifiable risk factors and by updating your personal asthma self-management plan.